Last year, Hyundai continued its charge into the electric vehicle space with the Ioniq 6 sedan, following the wildly successful Ioniq 5 SUV to market. As a sedan, it's a bit of an oddity among EVs, since most are SUVs to match the demand from shoppers. There are some advantages and drawbacks to taking the sedan route, and we'll go over all of those in this review. In the meantime, do us a favor and hit those like and subscribe buttons below to get all of our latest content. As the Ioniq 6 enters its sophomore year, it carries over unchanged from its debut. For better or worse, depending on your personal tastes, it stands out from other cars on the road with its unique styling. As for myself, I think it looks a bit disjointed, but there are plenty of shoppers who disagree with my take. Up front, we have a fairly plain front fascia with some active shutters low on the grille to maintain optimal temperatures. Hyundai has gotten away from the typical brand identity styling that other car companies have stuck to for decades, choosing instead to give each vehicle its own personality. The Ioniq 6 really stands out when you view it from the side. We have this very distinct double arch motif in the roof and in the main body. In some ways, it reminds me of a stretched Volkswagen Beetle or a shortened Mercedes CLS. To me, it looks rather heavy with this thick section in the middle. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I can stand a trim down myself. Helping matters are these flush mounted door handles that keep the appearance tidy. Around back, well, this is where I wince a little. The main shape tapers to a somewhat weak roundness with these dual spoilers breaking up the monotony, but also adding some awkwardness. This top spoiler looks as though it was inspired by a Porsche 911 and seems completely out of place, at least to my eyes. This lower spoiler, well, it keeps it from really looking like a 911, but it also reminds me of a second generation Camaro from the mid to late 70s. As I said, the jury is split on the Ionic 6's styling, but let us know what you think in the comments below. Am I being too critical, or does it strike you just a little odd, like it does myself? One aspect of the design that we can all agree on is its purpose. This shape is very aerodynamic, and these spoilers help to reduce turbulence and drag with a 0.22 coefficient of drag. It slips through the air as efficiently as a Porsche Taycan and barely beats out the Tesla Model 3. That may seem like a fairly technical stat, but remember that wind resistance increases exponentially with speed. And believe me, that is vitally important to an EV. There are three main trim levels of the Ionic 6, with the base SE, mid-range SEL, and this top-of-the-line limited. The entry-level SE with rear-wheel drive is the range leader in the lineup, with an EPA-estimated 361 miles on a full charge. A more affordable standard range model is on its way and should return a still strong 240 miles, but its 149 horsepower output may be a little weak for some. The SEL and this Limited are rated at 305 miles with rear-wheel drive and 270 miles with all-wheel drive. They make 225 horsepower in the rear drive, while the second motor up front kicks the all-wheel drive output to 320 horsepower. These are strong figures, especially for the price. That amounts to a 0 to 60 time of only 5 seconds for the dual motor and a still quick 7.3 seconds for the single motor. Even more impressive is how quickly you can recharge the battery. Hyundai made these DC fast charge capable at some of the highest charge rates possible today. If you're lucky enough to find a working charger that can operate at 350 kilowatts, you should be able to replenish the battery from 10% to 80% in only 18 minutes. On the more common 50 kilowatt chargers, you can expect it to take an hour and a quarter or so. That's a lot of numbers to digest, so to simplify things, the Ionic 6 has plenty of power and range to satisfy the vast majority of drivers. But let's hit the road to go over the details. As with most EVs, this Ionic 6 benefits from instantaneous acceleration. This model certainly feels quicker as a result, but it's not as aggressive as some rivals. That's most likely a good thing for drivers who don't prioritize performance. For this reason, the rear-wheel drive model with longer range could be a perfect fit for many shoppers. Plus, you'll end up saving yourself $3,500. If you live in weather-prone regions, the all-wheel drive option is a wise choice. The added power and traction are also appealing for drivers that want a bit more overall performance. Braking is nearly identical to the typical gas-powered vehicle, and that's a good thing if you're new to EVs. I personally like one-pedal driving, 
where the brake regeneration can bring you to a complete stop without touching the brake pedal. You can select that by just tapping this shift pedal here until you get the eye pedal icon in the instrument panel. You do have to be more careful when hopping off the accelerator though, as it really does feel as though you're touching the brakes. Thanks to having all the battery weight in the floor, the Ionic 6 has a low center of gravity. That makes it feel more confident on a winding road like this. Actually, I'd venture to say it's sporty in the way it corners, which means you can indeed have some fun with this mid-sized sedan. The ride quality is on the firm side, but not at all stiff or harsh. Bumps in the road are well isolated, even with the 20 inch wheels that are on this vehicle. The base SC model has smaller 18 inch wheels that may soften the ride even further and help to slightly increase range too. Adding to overall comfort is the quiet cabin. There's barely any wind or road noise and the lack of internal combustion noise means it'll reduce long range fatigue. There's also very little low frequency boominess that earlier EVs suffered with. Visibility is good out the front and out the sides, and you can see what's following behind, but when you're parking in a tight spot, you really don't have much of a gauge of where the corners are on the car, so the surround view monitor definitely comes in handy. In this top limited trim, you also get these blind spot cameras, but I prefer to disable them because they can be distracting, especially at night. I also don't think looking down away from the road is a good idea when you're changing lanes. But what do you think? Is that a solution to a problem that doesn't exist? Let us know in the comments below. All things considered, this Ionic 6 drives great, even better than most would expect with strong performance, sharp handling, and plenty of compliance and comfort. I think it will appeal to a very wide range of drivers, but that's only part of the story, so let's pull over and go over the rest of the interior. The dashboard has a modern and almost minimalistic look to it with these large displays mounted high on top to reduce distraction. You get a ton of information from this digital display and this infotainment touchscreen right next to it is within easy reach. This horizontal section enhances the sensation of width and spaciousness and these little flip up wings add a little bit of style. Thankfully, there are separate controls here for climate as well as some of the more commonly used infotainment features. I prefer this layout as opposed to having everything in the touchscreen because you won't have to take your eyes off the road completely to use them. Just below is a rubberized wireless charging pad and it does a really good job of keeping your phone from sliding around. I also like how this pad is slightly raised so you have space for your extra lenses on the back of your phone. Unfortunately, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are not wireless. That means you're still going to have to use a cable if you want to use phone integration. The center section of the center console has a fair amount of hard plastics, but these side bumpers here have minimal padding and they're slightly rubberized. The window switches are mounted here instead of on the door panels, but you get used to these pretty quickly. As far as storage goes, you have these well-sized cup holders here, a large deep center armrest bin, and this really big tray underneath for larger items. The door pockets are adequate, but you still can't squeeze some of the larger bottles in there. In any case, you really won't have any problem finding all sorts of space for your personal effects. Here in the back, I'm sort of at the limit for space. I'm five foot 10 sitting behind the driver's seat that's set for me, and my head is brushing the headliner. This is a byproduct of that sloping roof line, and you do kind of have to stoop down to avoid banging your head on the roof. There is plenty of legroom for me back here, but I can't slide my feet under the front seats. Here in the middle, we have two USB-C charge ports, and despite having this large roof pillar next to me, I don't feel that claustrophobic or closed in. All in all, it's really not a bad place to spend some time for a road trip. A power trunklet is standard on all Ionic 6 models, but the capacity itself is on the small side at only 11.2 cubic feet. By comparison, the Tesla Model 3 can hold almost 20 cubic feet, and most average mid-size sedans can accommodate about 15 cubes. That said, the space is fairly usable and you should have no problem getting all of your gear and luggage loaded. There is a frunk under the hood, but that tray is really only big enough to hold the charge cable. If you haven't guessed by now, this Hyundai Ioniq 6 is a great choice among EVs. It has more than enough performance to please a wide swath of drivers and you get plenty of range for road trips too. While I'm not a fan of the exterior styling, I also realize that 
these things are subjective and there are tons of people out there who do like its appearance. One thing we can all agree on is the beauty of its pricing. The base standard range model has a starting price around $38,000. Its 240 mile range estimate is comparable to the base Tesla Model 3's real world range, but it's not eligible for that attractive $7,500 tax credit. That is, unless you take advantage of a little known loophole and lease it instead. This top limited trim starts above $50,000 and you get plenty of upgrades to justify that cost. That said, I think the mid-range SEL is the way to go for most shoppers. As I said at the top of the review, there aren't a lot of all-electric sedans to compete against the Ionic 6. The Tesla Model 3 remains a very popular choice, but I tend to favor the Hyundai for its higher levels of comfort. Outside of the Tesla, you'd have to spend quite a bit more for a Polestar 2 or a BMW i4. So what do you think? Would you go for the Ionic 6 or try out the Tesla Model 3? perhaps even go for the funky and cool Ionic 5. Let us know what you do in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll see you next time for another review.